Hello, uh, my name is uh, Oscar Engberg and I work uh, as an exhibition technician at uh, Riksantikvarieembetet or the Swedish National Heritage Board. Uh, I focus mainly on media technology. Hello, my name is Oscar Björk uh, and I am uh, I, I work as a sound technician and I'm also the project leader over the project Echoes Over Time. And I'm uh, Gustav Lövgren, I also work at uh, Riks Antikvarieembetet uh, as an exhibition technician. I work uh, mainly with uh, design and uh, construction. Uh, we're going to tell you a bit more about the project Echoes Over Time and uh, how we developed uh, the immersive room and the exhibition uh, for the project. But first off to uh, Oscar, uh, what is Echoes Over Time and how did this uh, project start? Uh, well, it's, it started as an, uh, an ID and uh, it was basically me uh, finding out about this method that you can can use uh, acoustical measurements uh, and uh, to, to preserve a place and actually use it later on in the computer just to simulate the acoustic of yeah, the place you have uh, performed this to. So I wanted to start some kind of archive of uh, uh, different places connected, uh, uh, connected to uh, cultural heritage uh, in many ways. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I, so I searched for uh, project funds in the beginning and got one uh, granted. Uh, and uh, yeah, I will tell you a little bit more about it in this, in this film. Hi, my name is Oskar Björk and I am a sound engineer. I work with my own company, Artifact Studio, here at Vengorn, just outside of Sweden's first capital, Sigtuna. I am also the initiator of the project Echo of Our Time. During my parental leave in 2020, me and my daughter often went for a walk here in the nearby castle garden of Vengorn. And I've always been fascinated by history and architecture. So I started to think about what I can do in my format of audio with a place or a building. And then I found something called convolution reverb using acoustical measurements also called impulse responses. And that is basically a method that makes it possible to capture and recreate the acoustics of any physical place in a digital format. I applied for project support from the Swedish Arts Grants Committee and got it granted to use this method for the first time in Sweden to start a collection and preserve unique places in Sweden in a national archive for the future. Another goal with the project was to use this method to show cultural heritage in a new immersive way in one or more public installations. During the project I have captured a lot of places from all around Sweden and I am still expanding the library as of today. Right now I have over 70 places captured. One great thing about convolution reverb files is that you can use the captured acoustics on any other audio. So you basically have the room captured in a file. Here for example is my voice in Uppsala Cathedral. And here is my voice at the Royal Dramatic Institute in Stockholm, called Dramaten. And finally, here's my voice in the Vasa ship. This method is used today for video, game and music production. But I haven't found it commonly used in formats for cultural heritage which I think is uh, rather strange. The project is now officially over and the first installation that took place at Sigtuna Museum is coming to an end. In the exhibition we chose the acoustics of four local places for visitors to try in real time with headphones and a microphone. Hello, ett, två, kyrka. And the visitors could also explore all of the project places 
in the great module built by Riks Antikvarienbetets utställningsverkstad. The exhibition has been in Sigtuna Museum for six months and I am now looking for new collaborations for the future. So we had this idea of creating a collective immersion space for quite some time and Oscar Björk's Echoes of Our Time uh, fitted that idea perfectly. Uh, we believe that the museum visit uh, often is a collective experience, uh, many times as a family. Yes, and uh, VR or virtual reality, uh, by the traditional meaning uh, where you use uh, goggles and such, is quite the opposite even though as an individual you get a really immersive experience. Uh, with all this in mind, we wanted to create a small space uh, with, a, with an immersive audio and video experience. We also wanted to keep this project uh, at a uh, limited cost um, so that it could be inspiring for uh, smaller museums. We spent around 9,000 euros on uh, materials and hardware. Yes, and as this was a, a prototype project, we spent numerous hours prototyping and testing and building. With the previously uh, mentioned um, factors in mind, we started out with a design workshop uh, where we focused on target groups consisting of a small family of two to three persons. Uh, in the end, we landed in creating a standalone uh, immersive room uh, with great audio and visual experience. For the construction of this immersive room we had some parameters we saw as essential. Uh, those were intriguing aesthetics, uh, something that draws your uh, attention and uh, we got inspired uh, a bit by large-scale uh, uh, dome theaters. We also wanted it to be easy and quick mounting and dismounting uh, for touring purposes, so that a custodian at a small museum could assemble it uh, easily according to instructions. With this in mind, we tried to achieve a somewhat light and flat package in the tradition of a famous Swedish furniture company that you all know of. Uh, we also wanted control acoustics with as much sound absorbent as possible. We went with the uh, Ecosund recycled PET, 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 P, uh, plastic you make bottles of, uh, absorbent. Uh, also the faceted construction uh, of the room uh, contributes to non-parallel surfaces uh, that minimizes the sound reflections bouncing back and forth. The rug underneath the room also helps to block sound waves uh, from bouncing around and creating disturbances. We started the building process with creating a full-scale cardboard model uh, to get a feel of uh, the size and scale of the room. The materials we used in the finished room is uh, six millimeter birch plywood that is uh, uh, an oil wax on with the pigment in uh, and with the solid birch um, edgings. Uh, for the legs we used um, aluminum uh, that is uh, spray painted. As the room was to be assembled and disassembled easily, as well as the, in taking into consideration the limited physical space and dimensions, uh, an immersive projection was really out of uh, the question. Instead we wanted to try out the new type of curved displays that are available for gamers. We wanted to achieve uh, as close to a 180 degrees field of view as possible um, and also to get a radius of the curve of the displays uh, that was similar to the room's radius. Uh, we ended up with a 3 by 2 display cluster consisting of six 32 inch displays. The individual display frames of course uh, created an obstruction of the view for the, for the visitor, but it worked well enough for the application uh, since the, there isn't any text spanning across the displays uh, and, or other media that, is, that would be messed up by the, by the frames. One of the big technical obstacles uh, 
was even getting hold of a, a six display output graphics card on a limited budget uh, that also could produce a full screen uh, image spanning across all six displays. Oh, this in the aftermath of the pandemic and uh, with Bitcoin miners driving up the prices. We actually ended up using an Affinity Pro card from a previous project, which in order to get a smooth performance, we had to scale down the individual display resolution, but we got a total display resolution of 4K. As the other Oscar had experimented with capturing the acoustics of the, of the rooms and the spaces using a surround sound or spatial audio microphone, we initially considered uh, placing speakers all around the, the space. Uh, however, since the software used for the playback didn't support this and uh, that the installation would be too labor in intensive at each uh, location, uh, it, we ended up using two professional audio speakers in stereo with a subwoofer on the floor, which ended up a, a good enough solution. We didn't really want to create the custom software for, the, for navigating and experiencing the content as Oscar Wood should be able to adopt and update the content as uh, he went to another museum and another exhibition space. Uh, we ended up using 3D Vista's Virtual Tour Pro as this uh, software was capable and flexible enough and uh, can handle interactive menus, 360 video and photo content as well as audio playback. When programming the content uh, for six displays I had to take in consideration uh, the frames between the displays so I added um, uh, temporary frame guides in the software so I wouldn't place uh, text or important uh, visual content on the frames it's themselves. Uh, for the visitors, there's two ways of accessing the content. Either you, you click on pins on a map of Sweden, or there's a tag cloud uh, describing the content uh, available. Um, and when you access the content, you are transported to, to the corresponding 360 photo where you can uh, rotate inside the room and also listen to, to different audio clips, drums, vocals, popping a balloon or starting a, a car engine. You can, e you can listen to them dry, that is with no uh, room, effect room effect applied as it was recorded in the studio or as it's supposed to sound in that room. The software Virtual Tour Pro is originally meant to be used with a computer keyboard and or mouse, which we did not feel too enthusiastic about using inside an exhibition space. Uh, instead, we developed a gyro mouse using an Arduino microprocessor, uh, and our colleague Staffan designed and developed a trackball joystick kind of device that physically resembled the, the room itself. Uh, the first version uh, used push down of the trackball as click, which was, for accessibility reasons, later supplemented with two identical push buttons on the trackball itself. A lot of technical stuff there, but that's what we like. We hope you feel the same way. Yeah, and uh, Oscar, the, the exhibition has been shown at uh, Seek to a museum for the last six months now. Can you tell me a little bit about the reactions? Yeah, uh, the response has been great. Uh, and they, I, I have uh, spoken to uh, the person who works there uh, and they, they seen that uh, younger people has come to the museum uh, more. So I think it's, uh, uh, yeah, has been very succeeded. And also from the technical aspect, everything has worked fine because this has been untested and uh, uh, yeah, it's just been really, uh, really fun, actually. So what's next for the exhibition? Uh, what's the plans for the future? 
the plans for the future is to uh, take it uh, to an, uh, other uh, museums and yeah, similar uh, instances. Uh, I have a, a lot of contact with places from around Sweden right now. Uh, and the ma main idea uh, with this is to, uh, if, if, I, if we say that I go to another part of Sweden, then I can uh, pick up some places from there, uh, like acoustical measurements of maybe a church or some other, uh, some other place that's related to that part and, and uh, add it to the exhibition. Okay, thank you, Oscar. Uh, I'd like to mention that all the plans and all the programming for Arduinos and such and construction plans are available, available free to download from us, open source, if you want to create your own immersive room or something similar, a black box or something. Uh, and if you have any questions, we'll be here for the Q&A or just send us an email and we'll be happy to, to answer all your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you.